the tell of a person living with intent is passion. Mm. Yeah. That when someone, when you can feel the passion coming from, from somebody, when you can hear the passion in their voice, you can, like it's, it's tangible. And to me, the only way to be and to show that type of passion is for someone to have intent. Yeah. Mm. And so that's probably the quickest tell, I think, for me. Um, you know, some of the, the, just the quick things that come to my mind, like when I see someone that's like always moving fast, <laughs> like, <laughs> like wherever they're going, like they're just like, they're on a mission. Like they're like, I, I have to get somewhere because I have to do something because I have intent behind what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm sure there's examples, but I can't really think of many of someone that lived a life like that, that didn't have intent, yeah. mm -hmm. that just was an intense walker. I don't know what that, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just like were super intense. Like, I gotta get, I gotta get there. I like that. But usually, <laughs> mall walking through life. Yeah. Mall walking through life. You're not really going anywhere. You're just there. For, there you know what, guys? I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that time. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of The Modern Man. This is a series and a show where we tackle and discuss some of the issues and the obstacles that men face in today's society. And the focus here is growth. Today's topic is living with intent, but first we have the usual suspects with us, Tyler Harris, and of course, Tim Pecoraro. And joining us today, very special guest, Sergio Thanks Loiza. Thank How you, you for doing? having me, I'm doing great. Doing good, man. And before we jump into today's topic with Living With Intent, why don't you introduce yourself to our, our viewers and tell them what it is you do. Awesome, well guys, my name is Sergio Loaiza, originally from Colombia, South America, not to be confused with South Carolina. Uh, so get that right. Uh, but I am a cinematographer. I have a production company here in Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, we specialize in drone cinematography and also have past experience in uh, MCN and marketing. So kind of dabbled in a lot of different things, but now I'm definitely in the space of social media, marketing with uh, digital content and uh, also a little bit of leadership and development. Wonderful. So, Wonderful. Yeah. Definitely a lot of things going on. And to balance all of that, we know it takes intent, right? Yes. You have to kind of be intentional with what you do. Kind of like the purple shirt, the purple shoes. That was done on yes. purpose. Oh, look at this. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I guess I want to kind of first put out the question, what does living with intent look like? If a man's watching this, thinking to themselves, am I living passively or am I living intentionally? What does a life of intent look like? Hmm. It's a good question, I guess. I mean, for, for me, I would think, there's a lot of people say I did that on purpose, but it may not be good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it may not be something that's beneficial, mm -hmm. right? But I did it on purpose. Like there's a lot of people that will live very hardcore and hard line. Yeah, I did that. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And whether it was, even if it was damaging. So I guess we want to put it in a, on a higher plane here so more of a, yes, I did that on purpose, and it's something that I meant to do, want to do, been working toward doing, that type of intentional living. So mm -hmm. just wanna kinda put that out there to clarify first. But for me, uh, living intentionally is just basically, um, it's akin to discipline, right? It's gonna require discipline. So discipline simply defined would be give yourself a command and do it. Yeah. Like literally do it. And uh, so, it's great to have to-do lists, people do that. I have a to-don't list, so I yeah, make one good. list. It's like, <laughs> don't do these things, so then I only focus on what I'm supposed to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I can get, you know, I have focused ADD, is what I call it, you know? I, I get thrown all over the place, shiny things, which we all struggle with. But it's like literally saying, okay, this is my plan, this is what I'm going to do, now I have to tell myself to do it, yeah. and I work it out. But do it intentionally. And I think if you want to see a better impact, you have to align your intention with your impact. So if your impact that you say that you want is up here, it's gonna require an intention to match that of what it is that you say you ultimately want. Because a lot of times what happens is people, something will happen, they'll get a result, and they'll go, well, that wasn't my intention. Right. Well, were they aligned in the first place? Right. No, that's really stupid. Man, I like, how you, I like how you said that you can do something on purpose. That doesn't mean it was good or that it was 
positive, it was just done willingly or it yeah. was done, you, know, you set out to do that. But to me, the intent, if I think about having intent, I think about having a reason. Yeah. And having a reason comes from knowing why. Mm -hmm. And so it really, that's, you know, that's where for me it starts is what's the why behind me doing something. So the why behind the action, the why behind doing something on purpose. And another aspect of intent is just not allowing life to happen to you, yeah. but you attacking life and taking ownership and understanding that you're exactly where you are right now. For those watching, you're exactly yeah. where you are right this second, good, bad, or indifferent. And it's all on you. Like mm -hmm. it's all your fault. It's all based on the things you've done yeah. and taking that ownership and saying, okay, now that I know that, and that's me that got myself here, I can get myself to wherever in the world I want to go, but I have to figure out what my intent is on the front end yeah. Yeah. Um, to be able to guide me in the right direction so that I can do things on purpose, but that there's purpose behind it. Yeah. Right. No, that's so good. I, I love what you said, Tyler. I mean, I think it starts with a why. There's, I mean, everything in life starts with a why. Why are we here? I mean, if you look at why are we sitting down and, you know, chatting, yeah. what's the purpose of us sitting down? So I think for me, I always look at it through the vision of a bus. We're like, let's present all four of us on our bus now. We're each driving. Are you driving the bus or are you just a passenger, right? And where's this bus going? Mm -hmm. So obviously this bus that we're currently on now is to hopefully inspire people to understand what version of life they're on, what path they're on through the conversation we're about to have. So I think, I mean, you, I, mean I think you hit it on the nail is that yeah. why do we do the things we do? Yeah. And it starts with, I think, um, I always, I love to think about this. The quality of our life is determined by the quality of the questions that we ask ourselves every day. And it starts mm -hmm. with the why, like, you know, Tyler was talking about mm -hmm. and then doing it with intent yeah. and having a purpose behind it. So, yeah. I mean, focus, yeah. And I think we've all come across that person, right? That seems to quote unquote, have it all figured out where, mm -hmm from the outside looking in, because we don't know what's going on behind right. closed doors for somebody. But from the outside looking in, you see like, man, this person, they have it put together. Whether it's a nice car or whether they're doing great at their job or whatnot, you kind of just can almost see that this person puts out an air as if it looks easy. And we know it's not easy, but is that something that you can look at as a hint for someone that lives with intent? Can somebody kind of just stumble on success? Can they stumble into a great life? Or is that something, do you think, for folks at home watching that kind of want better for themselves, that they have to purposely go out and grab? And I think for me, the, the tell of a person living with intent is passion. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when someone, when you can feel the passion coming from, from somebody, when you can hear the passion in their voice, you can... Like it's, it's tangible. And to me, the only way to be and to show that type of passion is for someone to have intent. Yeah. And so that's probably the quickest tell, I think, for me. Um, you know, some of the, the, just the quick things that come to my mind, like when I see someone that's like always moving fast, <laughs> like, <laughs> like wherever they're going, like they're just like, they're on a mission. Like they're like, I, I have to get somewhere because I have to do something because I have intent behind what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm sure there's examples, but I can't really think of many of someone that lived a life like that, that didn't have intent, yeah. mm -hmm. that just was an intense walker. I don't know what that, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just like were super intense, like, I gotta get, I gotta get there. I like that. But usually... <laughs> mall walking through life. Yeah, mall walking through life. You're not really going anywhere. You're just... There, well, there, you know, guys, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Not that time. Yeah, um, you, you know, that's good. There's, I don't know that you can just by seeing it, like, by like, oh, wow, well, they have it all together. It just appears that they have it all together, whatever. I mean, it's like when you hear about people say, well, this person's born privileged, right? All these things. You know, you, I'll say this a, a billion times to people: pressure is the privilege all human beings share. Mm -hmm. It's the only way to get to the essence of who we are. You know, adversity reveals who you truly are, not who you say you are, right. right? That's the key to everything for me, right? So if that's true, I also say this. So maybe I wasn't born on third base, you know? So I can look at someone and think, wow, they're always on third base. So they're doing something, right? So either they got lucky, they get to, you know, 
they're des- what do they call them? A relieve a reliever. What do they- baseball? What do you call that person? Relieving pitcher. No, no, no. Someone who runs for them. Uh, um, designated pitch runner. Runner. Pinch, pinch runner. Pinch runner. Yeah. Pinch runner, there we yeah, go. Yeah. Man, can't even think about sports here. Yeah, Sorry, guys. Runner. If anyone, man, don't judge me. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I don't play that much baseball. But anyways, but being a pinch runner, so we don't know that they get to pinch run or pinch hit, right? I want to see a person in the batter's box. I think. I don't want to stumble on some sort of excellence. I don't want to stumble on some sort of success. Mm-hmm. And I want to encourage everybody to go through the motions themselves. Like, so to get that intent, right? I mean, they've got to find their flow. They got to know what it's like to be in the batter's box themselves. They got to know what it's like to see the 98 yeah. mile an hour pitch come, yeah. the changeup come, the curveball. They got to get hit by pitches. I mean, I think it, it, it's this, they got to have time to get into that box. So yeah. I think we can guess at a lot of stuff, but my thing is theories are great, but evidence is better. Yes. And so, yeah. you know, one thing I like to encourage people to do is like, go get evidence. Like, what would be wrong walking up to the person that we're looking at and wondering how, that, wow, yeah. they have it all together? What do we tap them on the shoulder and say, excuse me, mm-hmm. can I ask you some questions? Yeah. yeah. Because it appears as if. Yes. You know, just like you ask great questions, Ted. Yeah. And as you were saying, the quality of your life is determined by the quality of the questions that you ask. Yeah. I tell people the quality of the answers that you get are based on the quality of the questions. 100%. Same exact thing. Yeah. You ask great questions that pull these things out. What if we tapped? So we're doing it here in this setting, but the men watching, go tap another person on the shoulder and say, tell me about that. Yeah. How did you get there? Yeah. What do you do? What's the batter's box like? Yeah. Exactly. And that's the intent there. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> Yeah, that's huge, Tim. I mean, you, I, I, you, I mean, you obviously, you're, you're, you're spot on in the sense of like finding somebody that has the life that you want. I yeah. mean, for me, like I was very intentional when I started my pursuit of like creating the life that I really wanted was finding that had everything in life that I actually wanted. And that's, that might be hard to do because yeah. we're talking holistically, but it starts with what you said, having the intention to go be like, okay, well, I might not have everything in order, but there's got to be having the faith that there's yeah. got to be somebody out there that I can find something that has or someone that has holistically everything that I want. Marriage, mm-hmm. lifestyle, time and money balance, everything they can think of to create a, a balanced lifestyle. Mm. But it starts so with good. intention of finding somebody. And to answer your question, I mean, what do you tell an audience is that you've got to be intentional, I would say, in the sense of like, OK, who mentorship? Finding yeah. somebody that, that is willing to mentor you in that, in that sense, but you can't be scared to tap somebody on the shoulder because yeah. it starts with modeling. Yeah. It starts with modeling, so that, yeah. you got to be intentional in that way. Yeah. Well, something I'm picking up on, a, on the common trend with intent, right? Before you can be intentional on what it is you're doing, yeah. you have to know what you want and where yeah. you're going. Yeah. I know you love to talk about the area of exploring and finding that. So I think the step, first step for being intentional is finding it what it is that you want and what direction you want to go in. Right. What does that process look like for somebody that's just starting off who doesn't know what their intent should be yet? This is the million dollar question. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Like what, like how to figure out what you're born to do or what you want to do or, you know, your, your, it's really trying to figure out your entire life. And we can't do that for people. But for me, it starts with figuring out where your gifts are, mm-hmm. you know, where your talents and gifts and skills and abilities lie. Um, you know, you see a lot of people, they say, and, and, and coming from experience, like I, I've said it before, you know, if, if I could only figure, if I could only find something I was passionate at, if I, if I could only find something I was passionate about, man, then I would go all in and, you know, I'd be living life on purpose. And what I realized is it was more about figuring out what my gifts were going all in on those gifts. And I truly believe that that will turn into the passion that if you're going all in on the things that you're truly gifted at, you will become passionate about that process. Now it may come disguised in a lot of different ways. Like I'm in the insurance business. Am I passionate about insurance? Absolutely not. Not, nothing about insurance, you know, excites me or, right. or makes me, you know, tick. But being able to coach and lead and train other people, give them an opportunity, yeah. give them a vehicle that can get them to where they want to go and give them the opportunity to become the best versions of themselves. Like, that's what I'm about. Mm. Insurance just happens to be the disguise that my purpose yeah. or what I'm supposed to do is is wearing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think a lot of times people can be in a career, especially where they're like, man, 
this isn't for me. I got to figure out like the opportunity, mm -hmm. the opportunity. But what I know is that the right opportunity or the perfect opportunity or the opportunity of a lifetime will never come unless you're excelling where you're at. Yeah. And that's always going to be based on what your gifts are. And for me, you know, personally with my faith, like I believe that your gifts are God given. And, you know, if I'm going to start anywhere, I'm going to start with the things that were given to me by God. Right. And those are those gifts. And if I'm not operating out of those gifts that were given to me by God, then I'm always going to be chasing after things that are going to be fleeting. Yeah. And it's never going to take me ultimately to where I'm supposed to go because why were they given to me in the first place? Yeah. I love what you were talking about with kind of exploring that what your gifts are and also the fact that your career, your main job isn't your passion, mm -hmm. but it allows you to exercise your passion. I think a lot of times people get caught in with what their main focus is, their right. main career. This pays the bills. I heard a quote one time, someone says, I had to do the things that I didn't want to do to eventually do the things I love. Right. I think a lot of people, they get caught up with their, their personal scenario in terms of being stuck and not knowing how to use that for the future. How can somebody take their current situation that's less than ideal, whether it's a job, relationship, or, or anything, how can someone take their current situation that's less than ideal and make that their own and mold it into something to use intentionally for the, the path that they want to go on? Yeah, it's, a, it's a loaded question. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you, you know, and That's I get good. to work with people doing this a, a good bit. And so, like, if I was delivering pizzas for Pizza Hut, you know, say I was my work, and I know I was made for more, right? And I'm not knocking because I did literally do this. I had a job that I was doing, and I delivered pizzas. But my cheese didn't slide on the pizza. Mm -hmm. You know, when I delivered it, the pizza was intact. And then when I worked on the line, I made the best pizza. I was the CEO of that job. So I think it's important to drill into these deeper attributes, qualities, and, and characteristics as well that you want to have. So, you know, part of it is maybe, you know, I, I think symmetrically, right? So maybe engineering is my desire, but I'm working at Pizza Hut. So when I lay out my pepperonis, it matters to yeah. me, right? And I lay them out in a way where it makes sense, right? I mean, just there's balance to it, you know, because I look at it that way. Yeah. So it's like, what are the transferable things? What are the qualities and values? So I try to get people to look into key areas of, of course, know your skills, but what are some of your attributes? So in other words, if you had a job that paid you $50 an hour, you lost that job, economy's down, say, and then someone offers you the same, doing the same work for $25 an hour. A lot of people will say no to that or they'll go work and they'll work as if they're being paid $25 an hour. I'm going to go work like I'm being paid $50 an hour because I believe the, re the economy re will recover and I'm promotable. Right? Mm -hmm. So these are all the things that you have to dig into. So you need to look at your gifts and your skills, but you also need to think about what are my gifts and skills that are transferable into anywhere that I go as I'm learning my passion. But then also while I'm doing time in one thing, what are the things that matter most to me? What, what are those things that I value? What are my own personal values yeah. that are, or my work ethic and all of those things? What's the promise to myself? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That I'm not going to represent myself as less than. So you have to spend some time in that area because then, trust me, when you start living into it and you show up making those great pizzas, it's amazing how that job posting shows up for the thing that you ultimately want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it starts to tie into that deeper passion, you know what I mean, where you can go be fulfilled. Because as he said, you know, Tyler made a great point. He's not in love with selling insurance. What he's passionate about people yeah. and leading and training people how to do something better. That's my world. I, people say, well, what's your favorite industry to go coach people in? I'm like, where there's humans. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's people. like, I get to be a leader. You're I get to be a human. Yeah. 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 No, I'm, I don't want to do AI, humans. you know? But I mean, you understand what I'm saying? It's like, because what I've discovered was I didn't need a place to do it, right? I, you know what I'm saying? I just need people. I need to be able to connect with people who are wanting to grow at a certain level. I don't care what their station is, what part of life they're in. So that's what I think that's very helpful, I think, and useful when people just kind of break it down. Start with your skills and understand you'll find that passion, right? And he just has a great mechanism now to where there are all these people who need his, his love for seeing people improve their life. Yeah. You know? And so it doesn't happen overnight, but 
and you're not just going to stumble on it, I think. I really believe it's the bread cr- crumbs in the forest that leads you back home, lead you yeah. back home. You know what I mean? Dropping a, dropping a trail to mm-hmm. help you find your yeah. way. That's kind of the way I see it. That's so good. You got, and you guys said so much, so, so many good things, and I'm just trying to figure out how to like bottle it all up. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like, well, it's a lot of stuff, but I guess, I mean, if you're asking the question, how do you just tell the average Joe? I was the average Joe just a couple, a couple years ago, just trying to figure out what I was going to do. And I think I, I, the question I asked myself was obviously, what, are, what am I good at? What are my gifts? Um, where do I want to go? Those type of things. But then you kind of get stuck there. Okay, okay, I know what I'm good at. I know where I want to go, but what next? Mm-hmm. And it hit me, man. It hit me like a freight train. And you said it, uh, Tyler. It's like, for me, it's 100%. And without a doubt, for me, it's been modeling. It's always been modeling. How do you, okay, I know where I want to go. Then you have to put yourself in an environment around other people like these guys. Yeah. You have to put yourself in an environment where people are magnetic, where people have hope, honestly, because that's literally, in my opinion, people that aren't intentional is because they're lacking hope. And that's what our society is lacking the most of. So when I surround myself with people that have energy like these guys that have hope, there's only, there's only one thing that I can become is mm-hmm. I will have hope with them, alongside them. But here's, I think, the double-edged sword of that is that I will have hope for a significant amount of time, but if I don't put action be, be, behind that hope, I think we go right back to our mechanism of like, hey, flight. I want to flight because I'm not going to get to where, maybe those are just dreams. Maybe those yeah. are just fairy tales. I think the intention comes from surrounding yourself that will, with people that will build you up no matter what. That once you step into their environment, they'll never, they'll, they, they, have, they see dreams, goals, and all the possibility in you more than you see in yourself. Mm-hmm. Therefore, when you get in that stage, the intention doesn't really have to be there. Mm-hmm. You've got a support system of people to help you kind of just go through. Yeah. And for me, that's so what true. it was. For me, that's exactly what it was. I was kind of looking and then was like, okay, well, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go here and there? And then the biggest thing is that I was in my gift, which at the time was photography, emceeing, but I wasn't scared to pivot for where I really wanted to go in life because yeah. I knew it was possible. So I was operating here, but as soon as a door opened, I mean, my, I'm a man of faith as well. And one of the things I heard the most is that the worst thing you could possibly do is not walk through a door that you prayed for. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I was asking for something. And when I was operating here asking for something, when it came to fruition and I was like, I think this is it, I, w- I had to take the step through that door. Yeah. So, and that's, then that door was that, you know, <laughs> that was, people. Yeah. I was going to say that was like my situation yeah. with anchoring. I yeah. said I, I wanted more on air time, more of a challenge or whatnot, and anchoring opened up. I was like, this scares me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> well, you know, Let's go. you know, it's so funny because that's what people will do, and it's like you gotta walk through the door that you prayed for, as yeah. you said, right? Yeah. Some people so for. First of all, hope's not a strategy. Yeah. You gotta have some action. You gotta step through, right? Yeah. Uh, and I, I tell people it's kind of like that waterfall. Like if someone says, step through this waterfall and you don't know what's on the other side, I mean, it's just coming down. It's like a sheet of water, right? It's a tough thing, right? But the thing is, is we all have to remember that the future has a way of coming in unannounced, right? Yeah. But every time you open the door, the future comes in. That's the thing. Every door you open, it's not just the one that you want open. Every time you open the door and you step into a new day, the future is coming in, right? And I, the thing that I think, if you're not living intentionally, that makes me, I think, the most um, concerned for people is they're not ready for what they said. They're not ready for what they're asking for. That if you could get every, it's like a person opens a restaurant. Yeah, we could serve you know 300 people a night or whatever, right? We can do. Whatever. They get everything they want, and then you know, see they're not prepared. So they were intentional about opening the restaurant, <laughs> but they're not intentional about being prepared. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Yeah. All the things that fall there, is it bad luck? I mean, what is the, because there's depth to that preparation, yeah. because even when you said you made the pivot, there was something else you were still doing to prepare yourself for, right? So the work didn't stop. So you took action to go through the door, but you still had some sort of, there was, what was in your engine to keep you going? What was it? What was that? It was probably honestly what I mean. The thing that kept me going was, for me, it was just the questions I've always asked myself. It's, it's this belief in myself that I was created for something more, mm-hmm. and and you know, some of us, I'll be honest, some of us are lucky to have that just instilled in us by our family members, our parents, and some people are just born with that in them. But if you're not, you've got to surround yourself with people that are. And once I did, it came. It just I, I caught it caught fire, mm-hmm. and so what kept me going is like you know what, this is good but there's more. This is good, oh, good, but there's more. 
So I always, I always wasn't content. I always knew there was like, there's more people I can help. There's more things I can do. Photography is awesome, but there's got to be something more for me. And it wasn't in an arrogant way. It was just like, you know, for, for the same reason that you guys, like, ultimately, I like humans. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like people. You know, so that's, yeah, that was kind of the pivot that I wanted to take towards. Cool. There's Natalia, gonna two things, more. yeah. So to what you just said, I think there's this co continual process of alignment in looking at what you're doing, looking at the intent behind it, looking at your gifts, looking at you know, your purpose and your passion and making sure that these things are all aligned because just like you said, you know, if you've opened a restaurant and, you know, the intent is to, you know, fill this thing 300 people a night, but then all of a sudden that happens and oh my gosh, just like, what do I do? You can go through life and you're basing it off of your, your gifts and, and the best example I can give is this guy I interviewed one time on my podcast, uh, played a little bit in the NFL, incredible guy and, you know, he, he was gifted at sports. And so he was operating out of those gifts and, and football happened to be the, the main focus there. But there was an alignment issue. And when he got to the NFL, yeah. things started to crumble around him. And it was because his intent was different at that point. Right. His passion was different at that point. And I'll never forget when he said this line on the podcast, it just like, just hit me. He said, man, I realized ultimately that I had gotten what I wanted, but I didn't want what I got. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's so and, and that's what happens when, when you're just following these things from years back, but you're not constantly aligning and that's making true. sure there's an alignment there. But to me, what this boils down to, I believe in our society, we have an epidemic of opportunity entitlement. Yeah. And the problem with it is the higher level performer you are, the less immune you are to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if I know I can operate at, at this level, but my current opportunity only has me in this type of career or mm -hmm. this type of whatever environment, there's an entitlement issue there yeah. mm -hmm. that you have to constantly be focused on making sure that you're doing what you're doing right now to the best of your ability. And to me, that's the definition of integrity. But to be able to be in a current opportunity, it's almost like that old saying, uh, playing the hand you're dealt like it's the one you wanted. Yeah. Like excelling and going all in and putting 100% effort in your current opportunity as though it's the perfect opportunity. Yeah. Right. You and in doing that, that, there will be a progression that gets you to where you want to ultimately go. The alternative is what I see so often is people saying, well, this is what I meant to do. I don't have time to mess with this. Yeah. I don't have uh, like, yeah, I, honestly, as though it's like something that could hurt them. Like if I spend too much time here, like it could somehow, you know, hurt those skills and, and, and gifts and abilities that I have that are pushing me towards this. It's like, no, 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 no. Like your integrity says, go all in where you are and show the people around you that you're willing what's the sweep streets like like that's yeah. Yeah. like you're willing to to be the best the very best at whatever you're doing yeah. right now mm -hmm. and i think that's where so many people are that are watching this they're in a situation and they feel like man this is not what i'm supposed to be doing and so it creates this friction inside them yeah. this this almost like this storm inside them that's like i'm not supposed to be doing this but I, I'm, I'm supposed to be trying my best like I'm, this is not what I'm supposed to do, but I'm supposed to put in the most effort imaginable into it. That creates friction there. But to understand that what you're supposed to be doing will never come until yeah. you go all in where you're at hmm. is very prerequisite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it is a prerequisite, and it may be as it may be one of those tests. And okay, I, I'll give you this if you show me you can handle this well, like to kind of the you know, add to whom much is given, much is required. Right. Like, I I'll give you little and, and make sure you can handle that. Then we'll yeah. give you more and make sure you can handle that. And then we'll give you more. But I think there's so many people out there right now, especially in, in our generation, that, that they think that they're supposed to instantly go here. Mm. Not realizing that it's a, it's a pro like so many people I see coming out of high school, coming out of college, thinking they're supposed to be making what their parents are making, not 
remembering that it took their parents 40 years to get there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's funny, is, but they can yeah. get all of that through credit yeah. to give yeah, them yeah. the illusion yeah. that they've already made it. Or they can yeah. at least Do you see what I'm look, saying? Or they can at least make it look on social media like, like they're they've there, got everything. Yeah. Yeah. But inside, they're not anywhere yeah. close, not which close. is where the anxiety yeah. and depression and, yeah. and all that is stemming from. It's a yeah. problem. I do yeah. want to kind of touch on something you and Sergio were hitting on to with the discussions of the intent and modeling and yeah. whatnot. And even with, it even does come down to what your current situation is and how much effort you're putting into that. I don't want intention to come across as just actions. I think it's also relationships, oh, the yeah. intent behind the people you surround yourself with. Because, you know, I know you guys, Charles or whatnot, I mean, I'll be on air one morning and Charles will text me, tell me if my tie's crooked, he'll tell me if I'm messing up a story. <laughs> when I was first anchoring, he, he literally was telling me, he's like, Ted, Dude. slow down and, and get your words right. <laughs> but, but you need those people yeah. around you who are gonna tell you when you're not excelling in your current position yeah. or needing those people to model yourself after to a certain degree of knowing where it is you wanna go. So the intention, not just through your actions, but your relationships, can, can be huge, right? So I guess kind of what I'm trying to shift gears towards here when we talk about the intent of our relationships, how do we audit the current relationships and transition into those passive relationships where we all know the No New Friends right. song, and I have a lot of people who, who submit to that, No New yeah. Friends. Well, if you're with the friends you've been with since elementary school, hopefully you're growing together and that's a good environment to be in and if so i think you're very lucky but how do you kind of break that i guess that uh, that mold and that thought process of just sticking with the friends i've always been in school with to no let me make these relationships yeah. i'll start with this i'll say this i'm not in the mode of no new friends i'm in the mode of only intentional friends mm -hmm. you know and i know we're on that topic but it's realistic like i only want to associate not only but i only try to associate with people that are like-minded and that want to go where I want to go in life and that are doing similar things because how do we pull other people out of the ruts and the drifting that they're in is by having a group of other people that actually have peace in their life and have things like that. So for me, I have very intentional relationships and I don't, I don't necessarily would get offended uh, if I you know, bring new people into my environment. Like I say, for example, like I've admired at T Tyler from a distance like everything that he's doing super cool. We don't need to be best friends. And it's not because, oh, I don't want new friends. It's just because I'm on my path. I know he's on his path, but it's cool to see other people doing similar things, right? So it's like, for me, it's like, it, it is still very intentional. And I think it's okay to have intentional relationships. Mm -hmm. Like even us, how we met, right? Yeah. We met because we had common threads and we don't hang out every day, mm -hmm. but we still talk and associate because of like-minded, things right yeah you know so for me it's just about that having very intentional relationships at some point in your life mm -hmm. and then it gets even deeper obviously when you're talking about you know romantic relationships and things like that for sure of course sure. that's even more intentional i think yeah yeah which feel free to touch on the romantic side because i mean having a life partner yeah. me with my girlfriend we talk a lot about what our, our plans and our futures are going to yeah. be so i think you know, those relationships that take up most of our time are really going to have the biggest impacts yeah, on us 100 percent I think there's a there's a big difference between like recreation and escapism. Mm. And a lot of our friends that we've had for a long time, we can spend time with them and we're not growing. Yeah. There's no real intention behind it. And if there's no intention, I would beg to say it's a bad intention. That there's only good and bad intentions. Um, and so if if I'm gonna go hang out with a friend that I've known forever. And I know in doing so that I'm not going to do a single thing that's going to move me forward and make me a better person. Right. Then there's bad intention behind that decision to go hang out with that person. And it's nothing against that person. It may be against me in the way I've created that relationship and cultivated it over time or allowed it to get to where it's gotten. But I think the relationships that I want to focus on are the ones that I'm intentional about and the ones that are mutually beneficial in growing one another and pushing one another and challenging one another and, you know, talking about, you know, uncomfortable things, difficult things, talking about, you know, someone that I can, you know, talk about my struggles, but also someone I can uh, celebrate with. I think that's a big missing piece a lot of people don't have. Like everyone needs a friend 
or multiple friends that they can celebrate the things that happen and that they can, that that person will be genuinely like joyful in that celebration. Like, man, I've been working on this deal for, you know, 14 months and I finally just closed it. And that person's like equally or greater happy than you are about the deal versus those friends that you like, that are like, um, you know, must be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of are living that life. Um, but if there's no intention, then I would really challenge people to look into, is it actually a bad intention? Am I, am I hanging out with that person just to escape from reality? Right. Am I hanging out with that person to make myself feel better where I am, which is a real thing? Like, am I, am I hanging around with this group of people today because it's going to make me feel great about where I am now because at the level that they're at? And what's my intention behind that? Uh, there's... There's a lot of dynam- dynamics there, but I think it's just important to understand that every single thing you do is with intent, either good or bad. Yeah, it's, you know, it's tough because, you know, I, I call them, a, it's a necessary ending, and yeah. there's some great literature out there and stuff like that, but it's when you have to kind of walk away, you know, there's going to be people feel like that, you know, oh, you think you're better than me. Well, no, I'm just choosing a different path, right? Well, what about all this that we've done in the past? Well, you can't, you know, we cannot coexist like that. You know what I mean? We can't do a relationship that way. It's getting clear on the way you're going to do a relationship. It's not a boundary on them. It's a boundary on yourself and a limit for yourself with some navigation added into it, right? In some direction. But, you know, when it comes to auditing, you know, I think you need to first audit yourself, you know, when you're going to audit relationship and things like that. Because you can only attract what you are anyway. Mm-hmm. So if you think your friends are a bunch of crap, well, <laughs> they're yours. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, it's like, and you're the common denominator with all your friends, <laughs> right? So I, I, I think we need to start getting, I think, I, I mean, I love getting out. You know, you, you're in a room full of people, you're celebrating, you know, you're shaking hands, people are excited. You know, we go to an event, all of us go, we'll meet 100 people and they talk to us and we're there around a common thing. So it's in the context of the gathering. Meet some cool people, but it doesn't mean we're going to advance with them. So I like to think of, you know, there's the inner circle, there's the outer circle, and then there's everyone else. So I like to first do a self audit, right? And make sure that I know if I were to attract, right? Anybody into my life, what would they look like? Mm. And I have to start by first saying, what do I look like? Not what, what, not a perception, you know, I want it, I don't want a perceived value of what I look like. I want to intrinsically know what do I look like? Best place to start is start with your significant other, your spouse. What am I like? How do I behave? How do I act? You know, if you only got one inner circle friend and you want to know what you're representing. So Tyler, what am I like? How do I act? How do I behave? What, you know what I mean? Like literally get into those real conversations, start with yourself, then start working your way out. But then what's going to be interesting is you're going to realize that you're going to notice some people that may feel like maybe you're slightly pretentious or, you know, wow, you keep me at an arm's length or whatever. Right. Because if it doesn't line up, it doesn't line up. Mm -hmm. You know, not all pieces are meant to fit. And that's the thing. It's like, you ever meet, you, you know those people you run around like, this is my best friend, Fred. Yeah. You, you, you go to another state. Oh, let me introduce you to my best friend, Larry. And like all these best friends. You, how do you have time to have be- that many best friends? How are they all your best friend? Yeah. And it's just, we're so loose with how we describe those things. You know, I've got, I've got five guys I can count on my hand that have been in my life for 20, I would say 22 or more years. Five guys. that if I got put in prison, they'd come see me. Mm-hmm. My, if I was not available, one of my children were in trouble. They would drop what they're doing and go to them and help. Like I have those relationships. And it, 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 it didn't come easy, but there was an attraction and none of them were like me. That's the other beauty of it. When I got into more of what I wanted them to be like, but I started being who I was, I got the right type of friendships as well to come into that inner circle. And then the outer circle, there's a little bit more that some more will make it into the inner, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to try to put everybody in the inner circle. But the relationships are going to matter. And it is going to matter how intentional you are about building the right kind of relationship. But it's really going to be even that much more important about how you intentionally look at yourself, right? Not just say, what do I want and who do I want in my life? 
but also it needs to be ultimately what, what, you know, my why, what's my purpose? What are my values? And ultimately I want to add value to their life as well. You know, it is the iron and sharpening iron, the whole reason modern man, why we're doing this. Like I love, I love having you idea and I'm, I'm sure the more I get to know you, they're just going to be great. And, but I love the, the value and the diversity, but if there's an attraction. Mm-hmm. What did you do and I do to connect? What did we do besides sit and have a conversation? What happened? Yeah. Right? Same thing. It's like, it's all those things. But I think you're clear on yourself and getting clearer. You're clear on yourself and getting clearer. I mean, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, this, that's, that's the magic of this. Yeah. I know I'm just rambling with this, but it's no, just, it we sense. really need to, and I love the word, yes, audit. I mean, I'm talking like the IRS would go through your bank account. Yeah. Audit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, let it be a little scary to people. What are you doing? I'm auditing my relationships. Yep. Well, what does that mean? Well, <laughs> all things are being considered right now. Mm-hmm. Why? I'm continuing to grow. Yeah. That's, so, that's so good. I, I, I know you might like this. When you're speaking of audit, I mean, you got to know what you want. And one of the guys that I listen to a lot is T.D. Jakes, and he talks about how, speaking of relationships, he talks about how women, he's like, sometimes women are like, they're, they're shopping. It's like, I don't know it when I see it. And he's like, no, wrong. Yeah. Like, you, can't, you can't use that theory in life. Yeah. He's like, you got to know what you want before, you know, as you're shopping. No, leave me alone. I don't know it when I see it, when they're looking for a dress. But I was like, I mean, to talk about that and relationship-wise, I mean, I just went through that. I mean, I've been single for so long, almost nine years. And it's crazy to see when you know what you want and you start asking those, que- those questions you, and you start becoming what you want to see in another person, how you start seeing it manifest in your life like that, yes. especially when you're being obedient to who you want to become. And it's just crazy because if you don't know what you want, if you don't know what you're looking for, how do you know it when you see it? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. it's just like, it's almost, <laughs> almost impossible. So when he said that to me, or when I heard it, I feel like he's mentoring me, but I just heard him on a, on a, on a podcast. But it's like, you know, it's like, man, there's so much truth in that. Mm-hmm. You got to know what you want. I started writing it down. You know, the power of manifestation and all that. My intentionality was like, you know, okay, this is what I want. Let me, first time ever in my life, I ever started writing things down on a piece of paper about a significant other person that could be my life partner possibly and see where it goes. I actually wrote it down for the first time ever. I've heard it so many times, but I never decided to write it down. And I would like, I could blow your mind with stories of the things that I wrote down and the things that I've seen manifest Mm in just over the past six months. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. And it's exciting because like, why does that things happen for me is because if those things happen in our life is so that we can share why they happen in our life so that somebody else can tap into that same fruit, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's pretty cool. I just thought of too, when you're talking about women shopping and knowing what they want, (laughs) being with the modern man, it's like men should treat life like they're going to the mall. They know what they want. They walk in, they get it, and they come out. (laughs) That's a good point. That's a good point. Treat treat life with intent like that. Yeah. Because we, we treat time as if it's forever, as if we have so much of it, right? Yeah. And when you, you mentioned the relationships, People could be in a relationship for two, three years and be like, oh man, it just, it wasn't what I yeah. wanted. Well, you spent two, three years in that relationship, yeah. you know? <laughs> you should know you something should know. by now. <laughs> <laughs> you can't get that time back. Yeah. And, and that goes with not just romantic relationships, but friendships, jobs, yeah. and things yeah. like that. So when we mention audit, there are things in our lives and time that we're, we're giving energy and time to things that aren't serving yeah. us. Right. And that's taking away from the things we, we truly want. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. good, dude. Absolutely. Anybody like have? Yeah, yeah. Anybody have any last thoughts on, on living good. life with intent? Man, one last thought I had, you know, in regards to auditing, you know, the the friends you're hanging out with, people that you're spending time with, because you know, I went through a, a period over the last five years of just rapid growth and transformation, mm-hmm. and I separated from myself from a group of friends, and I did it in a really bad way. Um, and looking back, really, and just as we were kind of talking through this, I realized that. You're the whole, it's not you, it's me. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, that really is, and I've never really said this out loud, so I'm kind of thinking this through, but it wasn't that I was hanging out with the wrong people. It's the people that I was hanging out when I was the wrong person. Okay. I eliminated them from my life because of who I was when I was around them. Yeah. yeah. And so it's not just about auditing the people that you're spending time with, it's auditing the person that you are when you spend time with those people. Mm -hmm. And like looking back now, like, cause I've burned some bridges with a lot of those guys, 
Um, and it's, and there was a painful process for me to go through. Like, I mean, I had some core, core group of friends we hung out for a long time, right? all the time. And, you know, I had just moved into a different part of my life. I quit drinking, I quit going out. And so those people represented a time period for me that was painful and it was, it was like self-sabotaging and they were great people. Like they didn't have a problem in that era. <laughs> yeah. It was me that had the problem, but I eliminated or alienated myself from them, not because of anything that they did or didn't do. It was because they represented a version of me that I was trying to get far, far away from. Mm -hmm. I don't think I ever really communicated that very well to them, certainly, but even to myself, that that was why I handled that so badly. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably something I need to right. communicate to them um, at some point. But. Yeah, I think we that's have a, important. Yeah, we have a list. On yeah, well, and it's, <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad we're rolling. So this is it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Sorry, yeah. I apologize. But, but I mean, that's, that's, and I think that's an important thing to look at when you're auditing those friendships. So true. Is auditing who you've been through certain stages with those people. Because mm -hmm. it's not always going to be their fault. Like, oh, yeah. I don't want to hang out with Joe anymore because, you know, Joe's a bad influence. Well, maybe you were just a bad person when you used to hang out with Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now that you're not a bad person anymore, then maybe Joe, in your mind, is tied to you being a bad person. Yeah, right. Uh, so I think it's important because so many people we always hear, like, out of your circle, out of your circle. You know, take one negative person out, put one positive person in. Like, just this constant, continual process. But the reality is, like, these are human beings. Yeah. And you have to be way more, way more... Um, gentle, thoughtful, and gentle mm -hmm. in going through that. Um, one of the previous Modern Men episodes, we talked about that sometimes you can add so many people in so quickly that that can be the problem. And I used to think that that was my issue, is that I was adding so many other people that the people that were already there just kind of like got kicked to the curb yeah. because there's only so much time in the day. Yeah. That's so true. But now yeah. I think it's a combination, uh, really, of those two things. So I would just challenge people that, like, as they're starting to audit these different areas, that they're really mindful of who they are and who yeah. they were within the boundaries of those relationships before they just all of a sudden start making big decisions and cutting people off. Because it's, you know, it it's, uh, needs to be a lot more thoughtful than that. Yeah. Right? It's like going to Vegas with $10,000. You save money. You went to Vegas. You're with a friend that will blow $100,000. You blow your ten thousand because you were winning a little bit. Then you, you got maybe you got it to seventy. You lose all of it. Yeah. You come back without your ten thousand dollars, and you blame that person. Mm. <laughs> but yet you tell everyone how good you are with money before you left. <laughs> yeah. You see what I'm saying? It's yeah. like so you didn't become that person because of them. It's who did you become to be with them? Yeah, right. It's the price you pay to be with them. I mean, yeah. I love that. It's great. Yeah. yeah. So please be yeah. Be careful with the audit. Don't blame. Don't put it on everybody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't make me like I am, right? I mean, to be honest with you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, know, you ever hear people say, they, you know, I don't want to do drugs and make you like, be an idiot? <laughs> Let me tell you something. Drugs only magnifies what you're already doing. <laughs> it's like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you don't become an idiot. You know what I mean? It, 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 will, it will magnify whatever amount of idiot yeah. is there. Yeah. I mean, literally, but that's mm -hmm. what ends up happening to us. We've got mm -hmm. some kind of trap widling in us, and that's what he's, you know, each of us, and mm -hmm. we come around, and what are we changing to be with them? Yeah. yeah. I, I love that Great. Saying. I love that. It like says that. how power, money, and um, how power, money, what's the third one? Power, money, and alcohol. It doesn't yeah. change yeah. who you are. It yeah. increases yeah. who you are. It amplifies, amplifies it. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's an amplifier, man. Yeah. I, yeah, I always tell people, I was like, you guys don't want to see me on drugs or on alcohol. That's why I never do it, because I'm already crazy. Like, why in the world would I want to emphasize? Like, I'm already happy all the time. Yeah. I like, know you don't want to see that. So yeah. That's why I don't do it. You know? I, I think, Ted, my last thing would be this. Uh, and it, it, Man, I love what you said, because I have so many friends going through that exactly, where they're bringing you new positive into their life, and then they start feeling like, man, I'm not a good person because I'm putting my other friends aside. And uh, they start getting like, you know, they, they feel insecure even more as they're doing something good. So it's like a con constant battle. And the way I see it is like anytime that you're intentional, being intentional can be very intimidating, not only for yourself, but especially for the people out outside so of you. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be very intimidating. So, the, I mean, if you're going to step to be intentional, the moment that you take that step to be intentional, you better get prepared for a fight in the mind. Meaning that you have to realize that from this point on, I will take the high road. It's because people are going to notice that I'm going to try to do something better. So it's not 
it's not me, it's their insecurities and the things that they're dealing with in their life that they're trying to portray on me because I'm trying to move forward. Mm -hmm. And I have so many of my friends now that are stepping out of those circles that it's the same conversation and over, over and over. Oh, my friends are thinking this and this and that because now they're trying to move forward. I'm like, look, well, take the high road. You gotta put yourself in their shoes. Mm -hmm. You're challenging them. You're challenging them and you're, you're reflecting all the things that you're doing now into their life. And it's the crab in a bucket syndrome. Yeah. It's the crab in a bucket syndrome. It's like, hey, as soon as you start climbing out, people are going to start pulling. Not because they don't like you, not because they hate you, not because you, they think you're better than them. It's because they don't know what else to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that's why, at least the advice I always give my friends, take the high road every time. Yeah. Some of them might actually maliciously be trying to pull you back down, but most of them are honestly just confused. Mm -hmm. Most of them are just mm -hmm. drifting through life and they ju they're just looking for hope. Yeah. So if you take that high road, eventually you can actually pull one out. And they're probably also afraid that you're leaving them. Yeah, 100%. And their fear is what's causing them to yes. try and hold you yeah. there. And it and happens so much. To that point, there's been friends from my past who I've kind of lost touch with who message me and they're like, hey, Ted, I'm on this self-growth kick. Do you have any books you can yes. recommend? Yes, how awesome is that? You know, I'm like, hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, hey, not only am I like, hey, read this, yeah. I, I'll send them the book I read that I highlighted. I said, highlight what you like and let's talk about it. Yeah. Dude, because so I'm, my hand is out there. Yeah. So. Kind of closing this up, the common denominator for, for this whole episode that I've, I've heard each and every one of you touch on. If you're watching this, you are the captain of your ship. Mm -hmm. Take responsibility. Surround yourself with a crew that's going to help you navigate the waters. And remember that the rough waters make good sailors. Push through yeah. and also know where you're going. Look at your compass. Make sure it's working. Shake that thing a little bit. Make sure you're going <laughs> yeah. in the right direction. But look at your compass. Know which way is north and head in that direction. Surround yourself with a crew to get you there. Take responsibility and live with intention. Check that compass often and make sure you're heading in the right direction. Go out there, guys, and be a modern man. <laughs>